Let us be seated. We thank God for this far that we have come in this wonderful service of honoring God for the work and the service we have received through his servant, uh, Elder Jenga. And again, uh, it is a time that is very inspiring for each one of us and to ask ourselves, how are we serving? Because this is just a shadow of what's going to happen at the end of time. Because the work that we do for the Lord will count for now, but also in the age to come, the way you serve God will count. Therefore, this is just a shadow of what will happen at the end of time. Uh, talking about time, I know that um, we've been here uh, since 9.30, and you're wondering maybe uh, does the minister know that it is, <laughs> it is 1.40? Is that correct? Uh, is that correct? Is it 1.40? Yeah, I think it's 1.40. So just in case you're wondering whether the minister knows it's 1.40, I want to assure you that the minister knows it is 1.40. Let us pray. Loving God, we again thank you because it's such an inspiring day today. And now, Lord, we pray for each one of us that you will rekindle in us fire in us the spirit of service and even Lord as your servant or the Jenga goes on to this new face may the fire of service continue to burn in him and may he also accomplish great things even in this face of his ministry and as we share in your word oh God we pray that your spirit is going to guide us speak to us so that we also can be guided by your voice as the kind of life we ought to live. We open up our ears to hear you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. We have a family friend who went to be with the Lord not a long time ago, a few months ago. Uh, we met him when he was 70 years old. That's how our friendship began with him when he was 70. And he passed on when he was about, I think, 95, 97, thereabouts. And many things about him stood out. He was a sculptor. He worked with his hands. And not just a sculptor, but a sculptor of international repute. That people came all the way from Europe to come to his home. And institutions, prestigious institutions in the world, will come to get pieces of his work. Some they would buy. Others, he would say, I can't sell this. And therefore, they would hire that piece for about 10 years to display in their institutions. He was a great worker with his hands. And when he shook my hand, you could feel that a handshake has actually shaken your hand. He was tough. His hands were tough. And I met him at 70. But at 70, his grip was very tough. It was like a vice to the extent that when I had to greet him, I had to prepare my mind and prepare my hand because it was always the same and he had a violent way about it. He was like, ah! I think he saw all of us like pieces of wood <laughs> or like uh, you know pieces of clay because it was there all the time. Even when he was 95, and he was on a you know, wheelchair because of many things that had happened to his health. He still was, had the same strong handshake. And I had to prepare myself for it. 
And one thing that I remember, I remember many things, but he was also a builder. He was in the construction industry. And at some point, uh, this is not a story, it's not, it's a true story. At some point, he could not move, and he had many sites that he was putting up big residential houses. At some point, he couldn't move, but he built, I remember, an entire house in his sleep, four, five floors with the Mulika Mwizi at home. He would have the contractors, he would have the suppliers, coordinate all of them on his small phone. And he would go and tell me, now we are on that floor. He would tell me, now we are on fourth floor. He would tell me, now we have completed the building right on his, on his phone. What we are saying here, friends, is that if you stay on the superhighway, And avoid the service lanes. <laughs> there is always strength. Amazing strength. It may not be physical strength. But there will be a kind of strength that comes upon you to the end of your life. I may not know what strength it will be. But there will be a kind of strength. Because of staying on the highway that comes upon you to the end of your life. And so even as we talk about retirement today, we're not talking about weakness. We're talking about the super highway that provides particular strength to you. And from what I have learned is that the super highway is about speed. There is a certain minimum speed at which you must you must go on this new expressway. And so Elder Jenga would say to you that even in this time, you will receive a kind of strength that you have not received before. There is a type of strength that has awaited you for this time. There is a strength that God has reserved for you at this particular time in your life. Faith in God or staying on the expressway has many benefits. Many, many benefits. And one of those benefits of having faith in God is that faith in God makes you in a very unique way have faith in yourself. Confidence in God becomes confident in a person. Faith in God becomes faith in a person. Confidence in God becomes confidence in a man, in a woman. Because God shows his strength through us. And so the strength of God shows forth through us, throughout our time. I remember one time when we were doing our parenting classes, we were given one piece of advice amongst many others. That as a child sticks close with the father, sticks close with the parent, that child grows with a lot of confidence. That when the child has a good relationship with the father, over time, it translates into that child's great confidence. Now, as we relate with God, as we walk with God, what happens is that at every stage in life, there shall be a form of confidence. Faith in God makes us have faith in ourselves, whether it is at midnight, whether it is at age 70, whether it's at age 80, whether it's at age 100, faith in God shall always translate into a form of confidence in us as human beings. Caleb said in the scripture we've read, give me this mountain. And he's talking about give me this mountain at 80. 
And if you look at the story of his life, he was not just beginning life. He had done a lot of life, but at 80, he is still saying to Joshua, give me this mountain. Now, Caleb had a lot of confidence in God. We hear in his asking Joshua, give me this mountain. I hear a lot of confidence. I hear a lot of faith in himself that this mountain I will handle. So we hear because of his relationship with God that he also has a lot of confidence in what he is able to do. An 80-year-old who is asking for a mountain to conquer. And all this is coming from the fact that God has been with him and even at this age in his life, the presence of God translates into a confidence. For Caleb, it was a military confidence. For Caleb, it was a conquering confidence. Hallelujah. It was a conquering confidence. And we see a lot of uh, the scripture we have read right now just telling, showing us just how attached Caleb was to God, his faith in God. Verse 6 says, Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing the Lord said. He quotes what the Lord has said. Confidence in God. Verse 8 says, My brethren then went up with me, made the heart of people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. Again, a statement of faith in God. And now Joshua talks about Caleb and says, because you have wholly followed the Lord. There is a testimony there coming from another person saying, surely Caleb has followed the Lord. Verse 10 says, and now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. He doesn't just say, I am alive, but he says, the Lord has kept me alive. His life he attributes to God, the giver of life. Confidence, faith in God. And verse 14 says, Caleb, the son of Jephone, the Kenizzite, and to this day, uh, it goes ahead to say, holy followed the Lord God of Israel. Holy followed the Lord God of Israel. How long did his confidence last? How long did the faith of Caleb last? How long? He says, the Lord has kept me alive. And he said, these 45, these 85 years, how long did it last? 80? Even when he was 85, he still had confidence in God. He still had faith in God. He says, I'm as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. Even so, my strength is there. And amazingly, he had strength for conquest, strength for war. So he says, now therefore, give me this mountain. And it was not just a mountain. It wasn't just like, give me this plot or give me these acres. It was not like that. It was a mountain that had enemies in it. It was a mountain that Anakims were there. And Anakims were fierce fighters in every way. And he says the cities were greatly fenced. They had high walls and they had great fences. And the Anakims there were military, violent, aggressive men who were on the mountain. And what does he say? If so be the Lord, if the Lord be with me, again, confidence in God. If the Lord be with me, again, faith in God. If the Lord be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord has promised. Praise be to God. Caleb had a confidence that defied age. He had a faith in God that made him have faith in himself. He had a faith that did not allow him to slow down. I like that. He had a faith that did not allow him to slow down. Now there was age on one hand, there were anakims on the other. How does age and anakims, how do they connect? And the way Caleb deals with them, he deals them by faith. Age 
Anakims, and he did not slow down. And Elder Jenga, you've come this far. This far, you have come. And we can ask, maybe sometimes when you're thinking about retirement, you're thinking about slowing down. Definitely there are some things that you'll find will be slowing down. But the entire experience will not be a slowdown. This retirement is actually in every way because of your confidence in God a launching. Amen. This retirement is actually a launching into a phase of service that God has ordained for you at such a time as this. Now, what things are you asking God to give to you at this phase of your life? What promises do you want to see God fulfill for you? The encouragement is that age and such other circumstances would want to scream, slow down on your ambitions. Slow down on your ambitions. That's what you know, age and, uh, and, and, and having advanced in life would want to scream at you, slow down on your expectations. It tells you, look for small molds, not mountains. But when we read the inspiration, the story of Caleb, we see Caleb asking for mountains not small hills, not molds. Now, when we base our abilities on our limitations, we see that we can ask for small. We can ask for half things. You feel, maybe where I am at right now, I should ask for half a thing, or I should ask for an ant hill. And we dismiss sometimes the promises of God as belonging to other people. But faith, friends. Confidence in God inspires confidence in us. And as I said, as I shared, that there still will be a form of strength that God is going to give you for such a time as this. When we have confidence in ourselves that comes from God, confidence in ourselves that comes from God, when we have it, we no longer ask for halves. But we ask for holes. Amen. When we have confidence in God, even at this point in our lives, even at our points of limitations, because your confidence that you have is not self-based. It is faith-based. When you have faith-based confidence, you don't ask for halves. You ask for holes. We do not dismiss the promises of God. We remind God about them just as he has stated. We do not ask for anthills. We ask for the hill countries. We do not ask for molds. We ask for mountains just as God has promised them. And this is also what Jesus inspired in us when he said, Yes, the Son of Man will suffer many things. He will be killed he will be tortured, but he will rise again. And if death does not stop us, age should not. If death does not stop the vision of God, then age should not. Friends, and our elder Jenga, do not ask for bumps. Ask for anthill. Do not ask for anthills. Ask for mountains. Now, there are mountains for when you're 20. There are mountains for when you are 40. There are mountains for when you are 65. There are mountains for when you are 80. There are mountains also for when you are 100 and beyond. Caleb was not only asking for a mountain at 80. Look at this carefully. He was not only asking. He didn't live all his life on the service lane and then come to 80 and ask for a mountain. If you look his story, 
you follow his story and find that he had lived as a mountain conqueror. He, has, he had lived a mountain conquering life. He was a mountains man. Amen. He was a mountains man. You just need to read his story, his testimony, and realize this was not the first mountain that Caleb was asking for. He had many other big things that he had accomplished in the name of the Lord. And Elder Jenga, you have been a mountain servant. You have served well. You have served in big ways. And retirement should not make you a hills servant. Should not make you an ant hills servant. There are mountains for you to conquer set for such a time as this. The faith has changed, definitely, but the spirit remains the same. Continue being a mountain's man. Be a mountain conquering servant. For the Lord, in his own good way, still has mountains for you to conquer. And therefore, just like Caleb, you can say, give me this mountain because you have been a mountain conquering servant and even now you belong to a mountain granting God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us stand for prayer. Loving God, we sometimes forget that you are all powerful. Sometimes we need to be reminded that your promises are yeah and amen. Sometimes we live lives based on our limitations. Sometimes, Lord, because of these limitations, we become People who live not where and not how we are supposed to live. But Father, I pray today that you shall awaken in us. Awaken in us, O oh God, that mountain asking faith. Hallelujah. Awaken in us, O oh God, and rouse us away from anthills and moles and bumps. And help us, Lord, at the stage where we are at in life to realize that you are the God who grants mountains. And therefore, Father, I pray that our eyes shall be opened where we are at in life right now, where we could be lost in smallness, where we could be working within very quick boundaries. Father, may our eyes be opened that we shall behold the mountains, we shall behold the bigness that you're calling each one of us to at the point we are at in life. Father, you have given us a mountain-moving faith. Father, Lord God, you've given us a mountain-moving faith, but you are also a mountain-granting God. May it be so, O oh God. May it be so. May you spend your power on us. May you spend your power on us, O oh God. Not to move anthills, but to move mountains. May we call upon you for power. Not to handle bumps and small hills. But may we call upon your power because we know you are a mountain granting God. Father, Move us from smallness. And let us, oh God, worship you from the mountain tops of your granting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. The Lord 